So where we left off, we were talking about modules. Modules are cool things. You gotta put a lot of your code into modules if you can. I mean, don't just do it for the, you know, to be doing it, right? Just like if you were gonna walk through the student union, you wouldn't be doing handstands just because you could do it. But, you know, if you were a cheerleader, you'd, uh, you know, you'd be doing, you know, your flips or whatever that you needed to do. So uh, if it's reasonable, if the code lends itself towards breaking up, then feel free to do so. If it seems to make it harder, then don't. Right, until I tell you to. I mean, you know, if I give you an assignment that says, write a module that does this, that, and the other, then, yeah, the homework's going to require you to do that. So we know how to define a module with the DEF keyword, but I'm going to show you how to flowchart a module. You don't have to draw this with me. The flowchart's not the main point of the assignment. And if you feel like it, I can't stop you. Um, lucid chart, you know, whatever you feel like doing in your notes. Tell you what, let's go back to another one and just modify it. With my recent documents. Yeah, I'll just go back to that. All right, just going to pick one of these. Doesn't matter what it is, just going to fake a module call. Say this thing that says input target actually wound up being so complex that we needed to turn it into a module, right? We might make a module called input target. How to flowchart it then? Well, the way you flowchart it is it starts with another oval. Except it's a module. So define like input target. Right, that's the name of our module. And let's put braces on it just in case we needed to put some parameters in it. In this case, I'm not going to show parameters, but, you know, it could happen. Then... You know, it has some code in it, whatever, right? It has some calculations. It has an input statement, right? You know, it's got more calculations, whatever, you know. It's got to have enough in it to actually justify turning it into a module. And then it's going to have a return statement at the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to totally cheat and be lame and just hook up one line from the top to the bottom. I don't care if you do this as long as it looks good. But after I do that, I need to bring either the line to the back so it's behind everything, or I need to bring these blocks to the front. I can do that by right-clicking on them and doing Arrange Bring to Front. I started the recorder, did I not? Yes, all righty. Do that again for this one. Arrange Bring to Front. Yeah. All right. Now that looks pretty good, except, whoops, there. All right, quick and dirty. So now we need to show that we're calling. We have drawn a flow chart for the process, for the, excuse me, for the module, for the function, but we're not calling it. A function call looks just like a math block, a process block, back over here, except it's got vertical bars on it. I think the textbook shows horizontal bars. I think Visio, if you use the Visio flow charting software, it does horizontal bars. It doesn't matter whether the bars are. Vertical or horizontal. Well, anyways, so I'm going to squeeze that in over here if I possibly can. There. And what was the name of my module? It was input target. So input target. And I'm going to put the parentheses call there to show that it's a module call. Of course, the vertical bars also shows that it's a module call. Now, the way the modules work, I'm going to draw some lines, but then I'm going to delete them, is as if it goes over to there, and then it comes back like that. That's the way a, call, a module call works, right? We call the module, the function, it comes up here, it runs all this code, and then it returns, and it runs back over there. So why don't we draw those lines? Well, what if we need to call that module in multiple places? I'm just going to copy that statement, paste it somewhere, right? 
Say I wanted to call a mod, um, where did input target go? Anywhere? Copy, paste, all right. Say I wanted it somewhere else, right down here. After we do that, we call the module again. All right, now would we want to do this? Would we want to make a line go there and then a line go there? No, nah, we don't want to do that. We don't need to draw the lines over to the module and then back. That just makes it more complicated. So I'm going to delete the lines. That is correct, right? That is a good flowchart. A super web is actually a lousy flowchart, right? Because I just made stuff up. But it shows you the module calls. Now, to make the module calls leap out, sometimes I use color. And I'll show you what I mean. I could pick some faint color for that. I could pick some faint color for that. And then I could make that have the same color, right? And then it's real blatant what the logic is. Run down here, whoops, jump over here, do all that, come back, and then come over here, come over there, whatever. Jump over here, do all that, and come back. And so the module is just a separate step of procedures to follow, right? You got a cheerleading routine and you need to do, you know, flips. So this is the instructions for doing the flips, but you do two flips in your routine. I don't know why I came up with that example. I just roll with it. Okay, so you got to do a flip there, so you follow the steps to do the flip. And then later on in a routine, you do another flip. You know, you follow those instructions or come back, right? Or you know how to drive a car, but this is all the steps for driving a car. You're going to drive to work, right? So you got to follow all the steps for driving, and then you come back here, and then later on, you're going to drive home. So you follow all the steps for, for driving, and then you come back. Now, what if you have more than one module, right? Say we have two modules in our code now. You can see why I said don't flowchart this, because I'm just making it up and I'm going really fast. What I would do is I would color that a slightly different. Now, the colors are totally optional, right? You don't got to do them. And then if I had, you know, another call to that second module, right, then I would color it that. Right? So when it hit that one, you'd know it would jump over there, go all the way down there, and then come back. Heck, you could even color these boxes the same color if you wanted to. And so it makes it visually easy to see. It's running over here. It does all that. It comes back. It's running over here. It does all that. It comes back. And then blah, 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 blah. And then it runs over here. It calls all that. You, know, you can have as many modules as you needed to, right? They don't even need to be on the same page, you know? This is like an infinitely expandable thing. Anytime you drag something off the edge, it creates a new page. That's cool. Since you're not printing it out, since you're just saving it as a PDF, totally cool. That makes sense, guys? We will be drawing functions, modules, in our flowcharts later. Right. Not right now. But if you thought this was so cool you wanted a print out of it to take home and, and print on your bridge, fridge, I could do that. Just ask me at the end of class. All right. Reasons to use modules. Re reusability, right? That module that was called input target, it may be so awesome that I want to use it in another program. I could copy and paste it. Or I could have an input statement, the in, excuse me, import statement, right? And it would import this file so that I could use that module in another file. So, and their feature modular program, derp. And reliability, you can test a module, make absolutely sure it works, right? And you can have different people working on different modules. You know, you're working on one module, I'm working on another, and then we can give them to each other to test to make sure they work, and then we feel awesome about it. So basically, you have a main program. The main program is like that left side. It doesn't have to be drawn on the left, right? But the left side of the flow chart. And then somewhere else, there's going to be modules. Now, in this language, you define your modules up above the main. 
In some programming languages, you don't have to do that. You just get a low main, you can put it in other files. Well, that's true of this one too. You can put it in other files, but you have to have an import statement. So what you do is when you define your module, DEF, you have a module header, which is the DEF statement. You have a module body, which is all the code that it's doing, its input and output or whatever. And then it's got a return. In this language, the return statement is optional, but let's go ahead and put it in there anyways. And then naming a module is kind of like naming a variable. It's a name you pick. Make it a good name, right? Don't just call it X. It'd be silly for a module name. And, uh, you know, can't start with a digit. It could be letters and digits, even underscores. But when you define it, unlike a variable, you use the parentheses after it. When the main program wants to use the module, it calls the module's name. Puts the name there, puts the parentheses, any uh, necessary parameters, it puts there. Right? If our module had needed parameters, you know, like say this second awesome module needed a parameter, it took a value called limit for some reason. Then over here, when we called it, we would have to fill that variable in with an argument, right? That's going to be our limit right there. So every every parameter variable like that has to have a matching argument when we call it. Like that. And that's not just for flowchart. That, that's in the code. Also in the pseudocode. It's just half stuff. And then you draw each module separately with its own sentinel symbols. All right, sentinel symbol. Apparently we're going to call these ovals sentinel symbols, although they're called terminators to everybody else. If it asks in a quiz and sentinel symbols is one of the choices, just remember a sentinel is a terminator. A start and a stop. That's all it means. Like you're being frisked on the way into and out of the airplane. It's a sentinel. So when you take statements out of a main program and you put them in a module, it's called encapsulated. Like in a turtle program, if we write a turtle program, that will draw a smiley face, right? And then we decide that's so awesome, we want that to be in a module. We define a module, we cut and paste, whatever. That's called encapsulating it, putting it in a capsule. That makes your main program shorter and easy to understand, right? By putting those stuff, those multiple statements in the modules, then the main code, the code that's not indented, is easy to understand. Modules are reusable. We've said that a few times. I guess that's really important. It is. And then when statements contribute to the same job, we get functional cohesion. Eh, we're not going to see that term again. I don't even think it's in, in any of the quizzes. But functional cohesion means that if I have a module, blah, 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 whatever's in here, and then a return statement. This should all be related stuff. This module should not ask for the temperature and then draw a smiley face. Now that's a stupid example, right? But you don't want to mix the topics, right? Just like if you're writing an essay, you don't mix you know, up in one paragraph two different concepts, right? You're trying to do this paragraph, this, this paragraph, this paragraph. They need to be cohesive, you know? Relating all to the same task. If I had something that drew half the smiley face, and then I went over here and I made another module that drew the bottom of the smiley face, that'd be pretty low co cohesion, right? Because they should be, all the smiley face code should be there. Now, honestly, you're probably not going to write code that has low cohesion just because you're smart enough to know that if you're writing a draw smiley face program, it's not also supposed to have a draw feet part right in the middle. You make a different function called draw feet. Here's our example. They did put the arrows there. We're not going to do that. Why? Because if you call it more than once, you have arrows all over the place. Right. Notice that they put a horizontal bar. We use a vertical bar just because that's what our program has. It calls the function. They left off the DEF keyword. 
you feel like leaving the DEF keyword off, that's cool. Just like I put the if keyword in my diamonds, but the book doesn't. Whichever way you're feeling is cool. Place any statements within modules. Anything you can put in your main, you can also put in a module. And a module could even call a module. And then that module could call a module, right? If uh, this if this one needed to call this one, then it would just have a call over here to do so, right? All right, guys who aren't watching the screen, I want you to kind of take a peek at this. I mean, I know you're, you're studying and stuff, but this module, call from over there, runs down here, calls this module, runs all that stuff. When it hits the return, it comes back over here and it runs the rest of the code. Right? Now, some of y'all have been coloring your blocks anyways, and you, you don't have to color them at all. You don't have to color them according to the scheme. I don't care if you make every block a separate color. Yeah. All that matters is that the symbols are correct and in the correct order. So variables and constants declared in a module are usable only within that module. Now it's time to crank up some idle. So if you're feeling like typing along with me, that's pretty cool. So we're going to write a program that calculates the energy from Einstein's equation E is equal to mc squared. I'm just going to totally make it up. This isn't legit stuff. But I'm going to define a module called calc energy. And it's going to take the matter M standing for the amount of mass we have. And the speed of light is a constant, so I'm not going to pass that in. I better define the speed of light up here, up here, right? Speed, not seed, speed underscore of underscore light. That's how the book likes us to define constants. Is equal to 3e to the 8. I'm going to put a comment here. Trying to make things easier to understand, meters per second. You could abbreviate that to C, because that's, you know, the equation E is equal to mc squared. But speed of light makes it perfectly clear for someone reading, you know, our code, even if they don't know what C is. Now, honestly, I don't know what units M is, whether it's grams or, you know, kilograms or whatever. And I don't remember what E is, so like I said, I'm just making this up. I'm going to define a result variable. Result is equal to the amount of matter, M, times the speed of light squared. So star, I'm going to just copy that variable. I'm going to be lazy. That's a good way to make sure I type it without any typos, right? To the power of 2. Then just to have two statements. Wait, wait, wait. I want to break this up into two things, though. Result is equal to 0. I'm pretending that we want to do that definitions thing where we define everything before we use it. And the result is equal to m times speed of light squared. And I misspelled it. Don't spell it like me. Result equals that. And we're going to return the result. Now down in main, I might want to put the comment that this is the main code. Not necessary because the first unindented statement is the main. It kind of makes it nice to look at. Do it if you want, don't do it if you want. When we were translating pseudocode, we had start, which kind of indicated main. Either way, right? Start main. So we would need to input the amount of mass. So we're going to do a declaration. Again, we're 
for following the book idea that you have to declare everything first. You don't have to in this language, but why not make it for now look like the book? And then I'm going to add a comment that says get input, right? So mass equals float parentheses input parentheses. I'm curious enough now that I'm going to go Google the units. Just a second. Yeah, I can do it in front of y'all. Units of E equals MC2. Okay, mass is kilograms and it returns joules. If you're a physics major, you know what those are. I don't quite remember the definition of a joule. So, mass in kilograms, question mark, space, just to make it prettier, end quote, and then two closing parentheses, because we have to close both of those. Now, before, we did all three of those statements in one line. Excuse me, we did all those three of those functions separately. We did a print, mass in kilograms, mass equals input, and then we did mass equals float mass. Here I just did it in one. Feel like doing it that way? That's cool. If you feel like breaking it up in, into three, it's cool. You kind of develop a programming style, just kind of like you write a to develop a writing style. And if you do it long enough, your style becomes very idiosyncratic and very identifiable, where your coworkers could probably pick it out from somebody else's just by looking at it. That's not a bad thing at all. All right, now we're going to perform the calculation. Calculate energy in joules. So, energy equals, and I'm just going to use the name of this function, calc underscore energy. You feel like retyping it? Great. I kind of feel like copying it. Make sure I get it absolutely right with no typos. So energy equals calc underscore energy, parentheses, and we have to pass in an argument to fill in that variable. Now using a single letter variable name, I could have made that mass. If I change that to mass, though, I'm going to have to change that one, too. But here it has to be mass, right, because that's our variable that we filled in. Can't put M there. This variable name, don't do that, and this one do not have to match. They are completely different things. This is a variable that's defined down here in main. This is a variable that's defined down here as part of the calc energy function. This is a parameter variable. So I'm going to fill this in with mass. Energy equals calc energy mass. And then I'm going to print the result. Kind of running out of room for all this stuff, so I'm going to delete some white space. Come down here, output, joules, something like that, and then print. The result is, end quote, comma, energy, comma, quote, joules, period end quote, in parentheses. And then just because I like seeing it, I'm going to put a done print down at the bottom. Completely optional. I just like it. I'm going to test it out. So, 
file save or control s if that's how you roll CIT 113 whatever directory you like to save stuff we're in lecture H it looks like the other class is behind y'all now due to the ice day yesterday all right let's run and see the mass in kilograms. I have one kilogram of uranium. I don't know if it really matters um, what substance it is that you're converting to energy. But, all right. And the result is 9 followed by 16 zeros, joules. Now, that's a lot of energy. I just looked up how much energy is released by a kilogram of TNT. We could convert that. Just because I want to know that one kilogram of uranium, how many kilograms of uh, TNT it's worth. But first, anybody have the eyeballs on your screen? Red text? So just like L's can be confused for 1's and vice versa, 2's can be confused for letters too. Okay, so, like I said, just out of curiosity, I want to see how many kilograms it would take to match our 1 pound of uranium. So I'm going to write another module. And I'm doing this to make a point. Not, I could just divide right here by the amount, right? But suppose I want to convert it to other substances too, like what's another explosive, C4 or whatever it's called, you know, we could calculate that. Anyways, so define, convert to underscore TNT. And it's going to take the amount of joules and convert it to the amount of TNT, which if I understood my Googling correctly is equal to about 4 million. So since this is a function, we have to have the DEF keyword, we have to have the name, what do we have to have next? One more time. Right. Yeah, we just have to have the parentheses, and then if there are any parameters, in this case there are. We have to pass in the number of joules so that we can calculate the amount of TNT that's equal to. So DEF, convert to TNT, parentheses, joules, in parentheses, we could shorten that to J. And then TNT equals joules divided by 4.2 million, which I'm going to abbreviate as 4.2e to the 6. You know, we could type all those zeros. It would be 42 followed by five zeros, if that's how you like it better. 42, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's what you like. Heck, we could even make it a comment. 42,000 joules equals 1 kilogram TNT. And then we're going to return TNT. All right, 
I know I shouldn't do this. I know it's going to mess people up. So I'm going to let y'all finish typing so that everybody can watch the change I'm going to make. That 4.2 is kind of a constant, right? It's a physicist. Copy that. So I'm going to define a variable which is equal to that. Would be a good name for it. TNT joules. All right. TNT underscore joules. TNT underscore joules equals 4.2 e to the 6. And then change that that unnamed constant there, that magic number, to say TNT joules. I'm going to copy and paste that because I like being lazy. All righty. I may move this comment up a line because it's gone off the page for me. It probably didn't go off the page for you, so you don't have to do that. Now, really, I should define all my constants up above. But I didn't. You're defining a constant within the module, right? I'm defining it in the module, which is the wrong thing to do. I'm doing it for a point and a meet end. Eventually, we will probably cut that and move it up to the top. All right. Is everybody done with this function? Because I don't want to scroll down to where you can't see it anymore. Anybody need me to slow down? Fine. To let me, I mean, make me slow down. So we wrote a module, but it doesn't change the behavior, right? Because all it is is it's a definition, right? It's like me drawing a map, but if I don't give it to the guy going to Walmart, it doesn't change his behavior. We didn't change the behavior of the code. So we need to put a call down here. So above my done statement, I'm going to do... Another one that says calculate, how about just calc, <laughs> kilograms of TNT. And we're going to call our brand new function, which I might have kind of already have forgot the name of. It's convert to TNT. I could have made it calc TNT. I'm going to scroll up there, copy that to make sure I don't mess it up. So I'm going to copy the name of my convert to TNT module. Come down here and this is going to say TNT equals convert to TNT, C-O-N-V underscore to underscore TNT. And I need to pass in the energy. Now I'm going to make a blatant mistake that we have to fix in a minute just to prove a point. I'm going to pass in result. And then I'm going to print the result. I guess I'll put a comment here to that effect. Print kilogram TNT. So print, per, uh, print parentheses, which equals, or is, a, is equivalent if we want to speak all fancy, which equals, in, end quote, comma, TNT, comma, quote, kilograms of TNT, end quote, in parentheses. Now, I made an error here, and the error is this. Somebody may know 
I guess I should be scrolling while I'm, while y'all are typing. Somebody may know why this is going to be a syntax error. If you do, wave your hand, tell me, get brownie points. Somebody wants brownie points. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, it should be energy because we've calculated energy. Okay, now I'm going to fake argue with you. But we defined result up here, and we called calc energy. So result ought to be defined. It ought to work, but it doesn't work. And the reason why is this is what's called a local variable. It's defined in the module. Exactly. Right? A local variable is defined in the module. It can only be used in this module. I couldn't use it here. I couldn't print out result in this function. Even though it kind of looks like it, right? It looks like I could call it because it's defined above it and all that. No, it's in a different module. This is its own box. Remember when we said encapsulated? Can't get something out of the capsule, right? He can't use the stuff that's in that capsule. He can only use stuff that's passed in or that's defined as a constant. This is what's known as a global variable, technically. A global variable is one that's defined at the top of the code, so it's available to all modules, all functions. Now, this really ought to be a constant. Excuse me. It ought to be defined up at the top, so we're going to make two changes. We're going to move this to the top, just to make this properly structured code. Move that TNT underscore jewels thing. And then we're going to go back down, and we're going to fix that syntax error where we use the variable result incorrectly. So this needs to be cut, and it needs to be pasted either above or below speed of light, and you're going to have to unindent it. Back tab it. I forget if this uh, program supports back tabbing. Back tabbing is control tab, and it'll make it go the other way, but I'm not sure this one supports that. Okay, so I'm cutting that one. I like Control X for cutting. You can right click however you like to cut. If you're using a Mac, you can use Command X. All right, I'm going to paste it, but it needs to be unindented. I'm going to see if unindenting with the keys work. You can unindent by hitting Control Tab. No, you can't. Okay, you unindent by moving your cursor there and backspacing. And then I'm going to line up the comments just to be all picky and stuff. Still not going to work because of that error down at the bottom. So scroll down there all the way to the bottom and change that variable, which is called results, that we were passing in as an argument, and change it to the word energy. do that. I come down here where it says result on convert to TNT. I'm going to change that to energy. That's no longer a syntax error because this is defined inside main. So in a way, it's its own local variable. I say in a way because it's not inside a function. But anyways, it's a local variable. It's not defined above everything like a constant is, like the global variables are up at the top. All righty. Now comes the exciting moment. We have one kilogram of mass, and we make it go kablooey. You know what? I'm not sure if this is actually how atomic bombs work, but anyways. And it's equal to two gabazillion kilograms of TNT. I start to suspect that my equation is wrong at this point. Because I know uranium is powerful when it blows up, but it shouldn't be quite that large because they talk about kilotons, right? Like a pound of uh, uranium turned into, you know, a five kiloton bomb when it was dropped on Japan. And then they started talking about the great big weapons being megatons. And so that number's too large. But you get the idea that, inter that mass converted energy is really powerful. That's why atomic bombs are scary things. More importantly, we learned how, well, okay, not more importantly, right, but 
we learned how to uh, use functions and we learned what local variables are. Local variables are variables that are declared before they use them, but not as a global variable up at the top. Python follows some really strange rules as to what local variables are and when you can use them, and I'm not going to even confuse the issue. Python, by trying to make things easier to use, kind of deviates from standard programming practices in some ways. But if you learn the standard programming practices, you can write your Python code as well. And our standard programming practice is to assume that if you declare a variable here, it can only be used below it. It can't be used up in a function or anywhere else. It can only be used below it. That's going to be our standard programming statement. I may add a comment. That result is a local variable. So I scrolled up just to remember. And really, TNT is a local variable as well. The fact that these are local variables means that this code down here couldn't use them. Which is why they get returned, right? We calculated an important value, but if this code down here was going to use it, we had to put a return there to get it back out. It's like opening a capsule to get our, our, our piece of data out of it. Opening our Chinese cookie to get the fortune out, right? If you don't pass it out, then you wouldn't be able to read the fortune. I never know if my silly examples help or hurt. All righty. I think the problem with my calculation and my misunderstanding of it not that anybody cares except for maybe the physics majors in here. And you probably already know this is that equation converts light speed to mass to energy, right? Which probably means that that, that uh, calculation is if it was absolutely 100% converted to energy. And when you blow things up inside an atomic bomb, it doesn't convert 100% of it. All it does is split the atoms and release the energy based on the splitting of the atoms. All right. You're glad to know that. Any questions so far? Any typos? Anybody wish that I was looking at your code? If this had some if statements, I'd ask you all to uh, flowchart it. How much time do we have left? We have time to flowchart this. The reason I'm going to flowchart it is because... We have these cool, awesome functions, and I want you all to get the, the joyful experience of flowcharting functions as well. So go ahead and go to Lucidchart. Re-log in if you have to, lucidchart.com. I should put a link to that in our class information. So if you go home and you don't remember... So up here in class information, I'm going to make a link to lucidchart.com. Blank document. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a save as immediately, right, right while I'm thinking of it. File, save. This is lecture H, lecture H, dash, functions, parentheses, modules. Give it a fancy name. All right, there were a whole bunch of comments and stuff in this code. I'm not going to put comments in this flowchart. Well, I probably should, not going to. You can put commas out the side by dragging text boxes out. Every flowchart needs to stop, start with what they call the sentinel, what we're calling a terminator. Start. Are we doing pseudocode or no? Yeah, we're skipping the pseudocode. We probably shouldn't, but... probably 
I should. Do the single code. And I lost my window. But I'm kind of feeling like doing the functions first. They appeared higher in the code. They may as well be the first things we flowchart. So going to take a peek at my code, we had a function called calc energy. So I'm going to change that word start to define def calc underscore energy. And it took a parameter called m. And I'm going to totally simplify this. I'm not defining constants. I'm going to drag an arrow down here, and it pops up this choice to put a math block, a process block. And this is going to be E equals M times 6.0, uh, times the speed of light, speed underscore of underscore light. Somewhere in a comment, we ought to indicate what speed of light is. Flow charting was invented before programs, Ming was, so weirdly enough. All right, and then we can return E. Now I have another, fun uh, another function to write. It's going to look terribly like this one. I'm going to totally cheat and just copy and paste it because I know it's going to, how similar it's going to look. But I'm going to have to change its name, I'm going to have to change its formula, and I'm going to have to change the return. So I have it all highlighted. I just drew a box around it. I'm going to hit Control-C to copy it. Command-C if you're on the Mac and then control V as in vehicle to paste it. I'm going to drag it over here next to it and I'm going to make some changes. The changes is that is the changes are that the function name has changed. I don't recall the name of the function. It was called convert to TNT. So DEF erase all the rest of that. CONV underscore two underscore TNT and it took joules as its parameter. Oh, this is actually speed of light squared. I've got a failure in my uh, calculation. I'll go back and fix that in a minute. And this formula was TNT equals joules times that constant energy of TNT, or TNT energy, what I can name my constant. TNT joules. Okay. Joules divided by TNT underscore joules. And then return TNT. Don't ask me why I made these uppercase letters. Uppercase letters should be reversed or, excuse me, reserved for constants, but we're not that picky. Alrighty, my mistake is I forgot to make the speed of light squared. So I'm going to come back over here, double click, put my cursor after speed of light, and make it star star 2 at the end of it. Alrighty, I need to actually write the flowchart that's going to call these. I could put it underneath the functions. I could put it to the right. I'm going to put it to the right. Now this sentinel, this uh, terminator is going to say start. Drag an oval out there. Make it say start. Don't worry, I'm going to zoom back in. 
I know it's small. The first thing it does, the program did is input kilograms. So I'm going to draw an arrow, leave up. It's an input, so it falls in a parallelogram, a tilted rectangle. Input kilograms. I didn't put all that float and what it's asking for. This is enough for a flow chart. Kind of leaving some stuff out, but that's okay. You don't have to take the time to line your lines up like I'm bothering doing. Alrighty. Now we can call calc energy. Function calls are those uh, rectangles with the vertical bars. There he is. Or I can just drag it out from over here, right? Come over here, grab the box called a predefined process. And we're going to do joules equals... called convert energy, calculate energy, calc underscore energy. Joules equals calc underscore energy. Parentheses in parentheses. All right. If we had done the pseudocode first, I would have remembered to put the word set in front of all these things, right? Set joules equals two and set TNT equals two. I don't care. I don't care if you do it. Or not, I don't care if I do it or not. In the pseudocode, I'd kind of like to see it, but I'm not going to count you off if you don't. All righty, now we need to calculate the kilograms of TNT. So we need another function call. CONV, wait, wait, wait. Put the variable name. TNT equals CONV underscore Why can't I remember? My brain's 2 TNT. CONV underscore 2 underscore TNT but we have to pass in an argument because the function is defined with a parameter variable. TNT parentheses joules in parentheses. If you feel like stretching it out to make it look all pretty, or if you want to hit Control Enter or Command Enter to space down to the next line like that, feel free. I forgot to put the output statement for joules between the TNT and the convert to energy. So I'm, I'm going to have two output statements underneath. We could have rearranged our code to match. So, output blocks look just like input blocks, data blocks, tilted rectangles. So, output joules, misspelled, and then output TNT, another data block. And then underneath that, a stop. You don't have to take the time that I take to try to squeeze as much on the screen as possible. My stuff's not lining up, but we're not grading on artistic ability. Okay. Or the time it takes to make things picky clean. And then a stop. Alrighty, as I mentioned, I'm going to color code. I'm going to go to the start oval of calc energy and make it one color, and go to the start oval of this one and make it another color. I think I'm going to make jewels a, I select the paint bucket for the fill. I think I'll make it pale blue, and I think you can make these whatever color you want, but probably easier to just follow my example at this point and make, whoops, 
I didn't use a paint bucket. And then paint bucket, I'm going to make this one a pale yellow. Not all that pale, is it? Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change calc energy to have a blue header. You can use the space bar and then click and drag like that if you want. Paint bucket, change that to pale blue. Paint bucket. This is not necessary. There you go. <coughs> I'm going to zoom out for a moment so that we can see the whole thing. Then I can zoom back in in case you need to copy. You know, you're not done creating yours. All right, that's what it looks like. Pretty much. If I was following our code more exactly, I would have put this output jewels between those two. It wouldn't take that much time to do that. You can give this flowchart to a programmer, or I can give it to you, and you could implement this in code. But I'd better tell you what the speed of light is and as many G jewels is in the assignment, because we don't list those. I'm very curious now how you show a constant in a flowchart or a global variable. How do you show global variable in flowchart? They don't show. I'll switch over to images. Ah. Not seeing it. Not going to spend any more time spending on it. All right. If you're happy with your flowchart, save it again. And then do download as underneath the file menu. And if you didn't give it a name before, give it one now, lecture age. You can save it as a PDF or a PNG or a JPEG, whichever you like. I like PDFs. Last 10 minutes or so, I'm going to do some flow charting, excuse me, some pseudocode that I'm going to want you to do a flow chart for, and code it as Python. I'll come back to this or print it out if you need it. flowchart and implement in Python the following logic. And you know what, I think we may have even done this before, but uh, we're going to define a function called get underscore hours That's not how you do it in a suit in the flowchart. Well, I guess I'll, I'll run with it anyways. And then input hours and then return hours. I'm going to, I forget how they end the module, so I'm just going to put in depth there. I guess I could go and check real fast in our PowerPoint. Stop. No. Return. Okay. That's how they have that one. Well, that's kind of dumb because return hours is indented. I'm going to leave that off entirely. I'm going to be a bad pseudocoder. I don't care if you do the example or not. See, the uh, problem I have is that if I tab return hours over, it doesn't match the way the book shows drawing pseudocode. If I don't tab it, it doesn't match how you do it in Python, which is where you tab the return statement over. Okay. And then define get rate, which is the hourly rate. You input the rate. You return the rate. I'm going to go back and tab that over. And then we're going to have a main 
So that's a start. And we're going to say hours equals get hours. We're going to do rate equals get underscore rate. I could add two more uh, functions, or at least one more function. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to do the calculations here. This code should be put in a function. If you feel like putting it in a function, I'll give you bonus points on this assignment. I'll put that as a comment. Okay. And then so the bonus equals if hours greater than 40, bonus equals hours minus 40, bonus equals bonus times the rate divided by 2. That's time and a half. And then in diff, which you don't put in Python. I may even put that there just to make sure you know that. And then the total in that case, or the uh, without bonus, so I'm going to call it pay, is equal to hours times rate. And then the pay equals the pay plus the total. And then we're going to output the total. And then we're going to have a stop. Matter of fact, I'm going to put little comments there to show that those are comments as well. When you do your pseudocode, if you do my style, I'll give you full credit. If you do the book style, I'll give you full credit. If you mix smash them, I'll give you full credit. Not to confuse you, you'll never get it wrong by following the book to the letter. Okay. Now, I'm going to come up here and add a comment, or maybe I'll put it down at the bottom and I'll fix it later. Bonus credit available if you make the calculation of the bonus I made an error. I don't know if you spot the error, but the error involves the word total. Does anybody see what's wrong? That would, be, if I compiled this, if it was real code, it would say that was a syntax error. I've never defined. Oh, not total. I'm sorry. The bonus. Well, this this is totally wrong. That should have been the word bonus. I apologize for doing this. Fix this line right here. Pay equals pay plus total. This is pay equals pay plus bonus. And we need an else clause here that sets bonus equal to zero. Or we can set it above. So else bonus equals zero. Do you see where I put that? Because if our hours aren't greater than 40, I'm going to flip over and create a Dropbox for what you, your PDF and these notes if you want to upload them as well. There's a Dropbox for it now. And of course, I'll post the homework.
as a separate document. You never have to type in a homework assignment if you don't feel it. Any questions before I close the recorder? No, no, no. I should call people out by name. Do you have any questions? Do you have any? Okay. We're not going to do that.